Hey guys, this is the chapter 2, section 2 video, and this video is going to be on a program called Interactive Ruby, which is a command line interface that allows us to run Ruby code in real time, and we can do testing, and, and it's, it's just a great learning tool in general. Um, and we're also going to learn some basic commands and, and just some easy stuff. Uh, and you already have, you should already have Interactive Ruby installed on your computer if you did the Rails installer in the previous chapter. Um, I can't show you my start menu because I'm on a different monitor here uh, than I'm recording on, but if you go to the bottom left and click your start menu and click on the programs and you should see a folder called Rails installer and click on that. I can't find mine. Yeah, Rails installer, and then there's a pro, um, program called Interactive Ruby. Click on that, and you should see something like this. So this is Interactive Ruby, and uh, don't get scared. I know it's a command line, and, and some people are scared of that, but um, it's not that advanced what we're going to be doing. Um, so this, you'll see at the prompt, we have this, we have this IRB, uh, that just means interactive Ruby, and this main, that's just the scope we're working in, you don't have to worry about that right now, and you see these two numbers, this 001 and this 0, um, let me just explain, try to explain what, what this means. So the 001 is easy, All's, that's just a line number, um, the 0 means that we're on the top layer of our program or script whatever you want to call it um, so if we're on level zero and then we say we create a class alright so if we create a class and then we're working in that class then that will be will be one level deep so we're in the class we're not at the top the top level so if we if we're creating methods inside that class uh, they're only in that class on that level. Now, if we create a method or a function, whatever you want to call it, in the class, and then we're working in that method, then we'll be at the second level. This will be a two. So, whatever we're doing there will only be, it, it'll only be true in the method that we're working in. So, if we if we get out of it, if we define the method and then leave it, then we'll be back to the one. If we finish the class and then we exit out of the class then we'll be back to zero so I hope that made sense it's, it's a little hard to explain um, but hopefully that made some sense so the first command that I want to show you is the simplest command well there's actually two of them there's print and there's a, a command called puts so let's first do a print so we just want to print a string okay so let's just print This should just print hello world, okay? So we'll see. It printed it here, and we have this nil. Uh, what this nil basically means is that it, there's no errors, there's no issues, and what, what you tried to do worked. So that's all nil means. It means nothing, really. It means n no errors. So um, nil is a good thing. Um, and then we have another command that's called puts. and you'll see it does the same thing now you can see the only difference between print and puts is that puts automatically inserts a new line at the end of the printed text okay so that's why you'll see this is on a, a separate line than the hello world uh, the print has has it on the same line so um, puts is more convenient but you need to use print if you're going to have different statements that will need to print on the same line. So, uh, and you can see this 001, 002, this is our line number, is increasing as we go along. So, what else can we do? I don't want to make this uh, too advanced for this section. Uh, we can also do math problems. So, if we want to do 5 plus 10, and we get 15. Um, and like I was saying before, in the last section, I think it was, um, whatever you put in is what you get out. So if we do 
say 7 divided by 3 we get 2 well we know it's not 2 uh, it's not a, a whole number it's not an integer it's 2.3 but in order to get 2.3 which is a float a dec any decimal number is called a float so in order to get a float back we need to put a float in so if we do 7.0 divided by 3.0 we get this 2 point in uh, 100 threes um, so you just gotta remember whatever you put in is what you get out alright so I'm trying to think of what else we can do here uh, I guess we'll move to variables um, if you have any programming experience whatsoever then you might you most likely know what a variable is and what it does um, a variable is just a placeholder um, it can be anything as long as it's in the proper form uh, a variable in Ruby it can't it can't start with anything except a letter um, it can't start with an underscore or anything like that uh, and the only character you can have in a variable is the the underscore but it can't start with an underscore um, in ca it's case sensitive uh, we'll say a person with a capital P is different than a the person from a lowercase p they're not the same thing so let's just show you a simple example um, if we say person equals Brad which is a string you'll see I have quotes around it which means it's a string so um, if person equals Brad you'll see it just shows us the value here that we put in that variable so now if we say print uh, sorry and when, when you're printing a variable or doing anything with it don't you don't use quotes quotes are for the string they're for strings only so if you put person here in quotes it's just going to be taken as person so we don't want the quotes so and you'll see it did what we wanted to it printed the person who is Brad and we got nil which means there was no errors or no issues with what we just did and you can perform calculations on a variable too so let's say x equals 3 so this just tells us again that it defined it x is now 3 okay and we'll say y is equal to 2 so now we can do x plus y so this is all very basic stuff very easy uh, in the next sections we'll be getting into methods and loops and um, conditionals and stuff like that so this is very basic um, one other thing I wanted to show you is how to um, how we can let us know that what scope we're in so let's say I mean we have X so let's say print X and it's 3 so if we want to figure out what scope that variable is in we would do defined and then a question mark and then X and you can see it's telling us that it's a local variable okay so this could this would tell us where this variable is if it's in a class or what with methods um, so it's just a local variable um, <clears throat> and I don't really know of a way to clear out variables to destroy them uh, using this interactive Ruby um, but I wanted to show you you can also start a subshell uh, you can do that by just typing in so we can actually let me just echo this out uh, print this out so print X shows us that X is 3 so if we type in I IRB it starts up a subshell and you can see we were on line 13 here but now we're on line 1 after we put in the IRB it's a subshell uh, nothing that is up here matters in our subshell alright so now if we try to print X we get an undefined variable uh, error message so uh, you can start you can have multiple shells in one and all we have to do to get out of this is just type exit and then it brings us back to line 15 and we can then print X and it's three so um, just wanted to show you that real quick um, so next we'll be doing I believe we'll be doing methods in the next section so I will see you there